Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this Glustrefers series, we've been learning about Glustrefers and how to create volumes and so on. And in this video, I'm going to show you a quick tool called Hecate. It's an, it's an open source project to manage Glustrefers file system. It can using Hecate. Hecate is just an API layer, so you can use Hecate API interface to manage your Glustrefers clusters, volumes and so on with ease. So the idea behind doing this entire series about Glustrefers is one of my viewer asked me how to use Glustrefers volumes as dynamic volume provisioning in Kubernetes. So in order to do that you need a good understanding of what Glustrefers is, how you can use Glustrefers as a volume management tool. Later in my other series about Kubernetes I will be doing a video on how to use Glustrefers as your dynamic volume management, volume storage management. For that I need to be using Hecate as an interface, as an API layer. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use, how to install Hecate and how to use Hecate to create Glustrefers clusters and then create volumes, mount the volume and so on. I've added a new GitHub repository in my GitHub account called Glustrefers and in that repository I've got Glustrefers Hecate demo directory and here I've got my vagrant infrastructure for this demo. So basically what we will be doing is we will be creating two virtual machines for the Gluster nodes, Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. And we will be attaching a second hard disk which we will be using for Gluster volumes. And all we will be doing in these two Gluster nodes is just install the Gluster server, Glusterfs server package and start the Gluster D service. That's all. So we are not going to create any bricks, we are not going to create any volumes, we are not going to configure any cluster settings or anything. All we are going to do is just bring up two virtual machines and install Glustrefer server and start the service with new disks attached. So those are the disks that we are going to be using for cluster volumes. And we will be provisioning another virtual machine. Just use the virtual machine and install the Hecate tools. So it comes with Hecate, the server package itself, and the Hecate CLI, which is the command line interface to interact with the Hecate. So I've got my Vagrant environment here, Vagrant infra, and I've got the Vagrant file. So when you do Vagrant up, you will end up with two virtual machines for Gluster Nodes and one virtual machine for Hecate. All of them will be running Ubuntu 20.04 and each of them will have one gig of memory and one CPU. And I'm doing a bootstrapping, a basic vagrant provisioning and all I'm doing here is enabling SSH password authentication. I'm setting the root password as admin and I'm updating the ETC hosts with IP address of all the other machines so that they can talk to each other through name instead of IP address. So back to our documentation here. So that's what we will be doing basically you run the Hecate server it listens on port 8080 so that's your API interface and you can then install the Hecate CLI the Hecate CLI binary on any of your client machine and connect to this Hecate server but I'm going to do everything in this machine itself so let me go to my terminal git clone glusterfs repository glusterfs cd to glusterfs cd to glusterfs Hecate demo and cd to vagrant infra and here I've got the vagrant file and I'm going to do vagrant up. I will pause the video and come back when the machines have been provisioned. Alright, so all of our virtual machines are up and running now. But now I'm going to add an additional hard disk to the two Glustrefers nodes. I could have done it in the vagrant file itself, but it's not a reliable way. Depending on the operating system you use, depending on the version of vagrant, version of VirtualBox you use, the commands might be different. So I just want to keep the vagrant file simple and manually add the second disk. So let me open up VirtualBox and Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. So I can't edit the virtual machine configuration while they are running. So I'm going to Vagrant Halt Gluster 1 and Gluster 2. Machines are powered off. Now I can edit the settings of Gluster 1. Go to storage and add a second hard disk. Create VDI fix it size 2 gig. I don't need more than that. It's just for demo purpose. Create, choose Okay, and do the same for the other node, cluster 2, storage, add disk, create, VDI, fix it size, 2 gig, create, choose, okay. Alright, so now I can bring those machines back up. Gluster 1 and Gluster 2 and this time no provision. I don't want to run the provision again. All right, machines are back up. Let's log into these two Gluster nodes. I'm going to open up Tmux, split the pane, SSH root at 172.16.16.201, which is Gluster 1 and the password is admin. And in the bottom pane, SSH202, password is admin. And I'm going to synchronize my pane 
All right, LS block. And now we can see the disk that I've added, two gig. So it already had a second hard disk SDB for some reason. My disk that I've added, new disk that I'm gonna use for cluster volume is SDC on both these two machines. Okay, so these are LSB release, Ubuntu 2004 machine. So all we have to do is just install the GlusterFS server package. Let's go to our documentation, apt install minus y GlusterFS server. And we are going to enable and start the GlusterD service. So make sure to run all these commands as root user, otherwise prefix sudo as applicable. Let's copy that. Paste it. GlusterFS server package installed and the systemd service has been started. Let's take a look. Systemctl status glusterd and it's running fine. So now I'm going to exit out of this. Okay, I'm back in my host machine. Okay, so we are done with Gluster nodes. So all we have to do is just install this package and start the GlusterD service. And now we can go ahead and do the Hecate setup. So let's log into the Hecate node, which is SSH200 and the password is again admin for the root user. This is again an Ubuntu 2004 machine and the first step we are going to do is download the Hecate binaries and I'm extracting that and I'm moving Hecate and Hecate CLI binary to use the local bin. That's all I'm doing here. Let's copy that. Okay, so we've downloaded Hecate and Hecate CLI binary and I can do which Hecate, Hecate minus minus version and I can do which Hecate CLI, we have got everything ready. Okay, the next step is to create a group. So we are creating a group, we are creating a user and we are creating the required directories. Let's do that. Okay, that's done. And now we are creating SSH passwordless access from the Hecate node to our two cluster nodes. So when we do, when we interact with the Hecate API layer, to create cluster, to create volumes, this Hecate machine needs to be able to log into those two nodes and do some operations. So we set up SSH passwordless access. So first we are using SSH keygen to create a key pair and we are storing the private key in this directory, etc Hecate, which we already created here. And the a key name is Hecate underscore key. And we are copying this key to cluster one and cluster two so that we can log in as root account without having to type in the password. Okay, let's copy that, paste it, yes, password is admin. Okay, so I've copied my key to both Gluster1 and Gluster2, so now if I do SSH and use the private key we just generated and log in to Gluster1, it shouldn't ask for a password, yes, we logged in without typing the password. Similarly for Gluster2, from Hecate node we can log in to Gluster1 or Gluster2 as root account without typing the password. So that's one of the requirement. And now we are going to configure Hecate. As part of the star file, there is this Hecate.json configuration, a sample configuration file that we can use. So I'm just going to copy that Hecate configuration. This is the directory where we extracted the tar file and copy the configuration under etc Hecate. Okay, and let's edit that file. Hecate.json, let's turn off syntax highlighting. What we're going to do here is under enable JWT authorization, use false, so I'm going to enable authentication and authorization, so change that to true. And under key here, so we've got admin key and we've got the user key. So set this to any secret password, but I'm just going to say secret password and the same here, secret password if you skip this key if you don't enter any key for this admin or the user field the Hecate service won't start fine okay so that's one thing and then search for executor executor is set to mock change this to SSH so we have three types of executor mock SSH and Kubernetes so if your cluster nodes are running as pods inside Kubernetes you will be using Kubernetes as executor but we are having cluster running in virtual machines on physical servers then we will have to use the SSH executor okay and we have the SSH section the key file is the key that we generated in an earlier step and the key file is etc Hecate Hecate underscore key. The user is root user and the port is 22. 
FS tab is ETC FS tab. So we only need these four options at the moment. From this line to the end, I'm going to delete. Let me also delete the last comma character. And I also don't need the cube exec configuration because we are not using the Kubernetes executor. Delete from this line till the end. That's all we need. Let's save this file. Go back to the documentation. So we've done that. And finally, we update the permissions for these directories. And now we are creating a systemd unit file for Hecate. Let's copy that. Paste it. And finally, we are reloading the systemd daemon and enabling and starting the Hecate service. Let's do that. Okay, that's done. Systemctl status Hecate. Cool, Hecate is running and listening on port 80. So how do we verify it? So we can do curl. I think I've got that in the documentation. Yes, curl localhost colon 8080. So 8080 is the port that Hecate server API server listens on for client connections through Hecate CLI. So let's use that command to verify if it's actually running. So that's one of the endpoints slash hello that doesn't require authentication. All the other endpoints will require authentication because we enabled authentication in the Hecate configuration file. So this one, if you get this text back, hello from Hecate, your Hecate server, API server is running fine. We are going to need, for running any Hecate CLI command, you need to specify the user and the secret key. So this is the password that we specified in the admin section for the JWT authorization in the Hecate configuration file. So we just need to export this. Or what you can do is Hecate dash CLI. If you don't want to export, you can always pass minus minus user admin minus minus password. I think it's password. Yeah, secret password and whatever command you want help, whatever it is. But I don't want to type in for every single command. So I'm just basically exporting it as an environment variable. So user is admin and the Hecate CLI key is the password that you specified in your configuration. All right, so yeah, that's it. So now let's start and play with Hecate CLI. So what we are going to do is create a Gluster cluster with those two nodes. So we've got two nodes running Gluster FS server, but they're not part of any cluster. So we're gonna use Hecate API interface to create a Gluster cluster out of those two nodes, and then add the nodes to the cluster, then add devices, attach the device, the second hardest that we added. To those nodes and then create volumes and then mount volumes on the client and then we can also try how it works if we bring down one of the cluster node so i don't need this documentation anymore hecate cli minus minus help less okay so we've got a list of commands here cluster device node volume and all those things the first thing we're going to do is create a cluster and we're going to use this command here let's clear the screen Hecate CLI cluster minus minus help less. Okay, so for the Hecate CLI cluster command, we've got subcommands. We can create a cluster, delete cluster, info about the cluster, we can list the cluster and so on. Hecate CLI cluster list. We don't have any cluster, that's fine. Cluster create. Let's see how to create a cluster minus minus help. Less. Okay, so we've got some examples here. So now we are going to create a cluster and it seems it's the only command that I need. Hecate CLI cluster create. Okay, let's do that. All right, that's done. We've got our cluster ready, but we haven't added any nodes to this cluster. We've just created a metadata. We've just created a cluster. Hecate CLI cluster list okay so we've got our cluster that's the id of the cluster and we can look at the information about this cluster hecate cli cluster info and the cluster id so we have the cluster that's the cluster id we don't have any nodes or we don't have any volumes in the cluster okay so we've created a cluster now we need to add nodes to the cluster so hecate cli node minus minus help Less. Okay, so we can add node, delete node, disable a node, enable a node, information about the node, list, remove. We are interested in adding a node. Let's see the help option for adding a node. Node, add, minus, minus, help. So how to add a node? 
So that's an example here. Hecate CLI node add minus minus zone is three. Zone is the, the failure domain. So if you've got like uh, multiple cluster nodes, you can specify which node goes into which zone. You can put two cluster nodes in one region and two cluster nodes in another region and you differentiate them by specifying the zone. So these two cluster nodes will have zone one, meaning they are in a particular region and the other two nodes are in a different region by specifying a different zone ID. So when it comes to creating volumes, and replica you can spread it between the region so that's the uh, the option zone here and we are specifying on which cluster we want to add these nodes to management host name and storage host name is going to be the server that you are trying to add hecate cli node add minus minus zone one let's say zone let's add both of our cluster nodes to the same zone minus minus cluster i don't know what my cluster is so let's do hecate cli cluster list hecate cli node add minus minus zone one minus minus cluster i want to add it to this cluster minus minus management host name is yes, let's add our first cluster node which is cluster one minus minus storage host name is cluster one okay so that's done let's also add our second node cluster two cluster two and you get information about this the node so we can also do this via the cli hecate cli node list we have two nodes and if you want to look at information about a specific node hecate cli node info and copy paste the id of the node and you get the information which zone which cluster it belongs to state whether online or offline and at the moment under devices it doesn't have any device so that's the next step you're going to attach the device to these nodes i can also do hecate cli cluster list hecate cli cluster info Okay, so now we've got our cluster with two nodes added. Still, we don't have any volumes, but before adding the volumes, we need to add devices. So if you remember in cluster one and cluster two virtual machines, we added dev STC, the third disk. So that's the disk we are going to use. Okay, so Hecate CLI device minus minus help. Okay, so we can add a device, delete, disable, enable, info, remove, resync, and all those things. And let's see the help option on how to add a device. Hecate CLI device add, name of the device, which device, which disk you want to add, and the, the node to which you want to add that device to. Okay, so Hecate CLI node list, we've got two nodes. Hecate CLI device add minus minus name is dev sdc in my case so make sure to use the right disk minus minus node let's use the first node okay device added successfully again let's use the same command and use the other node copy the node id paste it and once this is done let's verify hecate cli node info and do that so we've got the device attached okay so management host zone one it's all the same information but under devices now we've got the device attached and we can also see hecate cli device list uh sorry for hecate device we don't have any list information cool so we've created a cluster we've added both of our nodes to this cluster we've attached a device to these nodes and now we're going to create a volume hecate cli volume less okay so we can clone a volume create a volume delete a volume information about a volume list volumes and so on hecate cli volume list we don't have any volumes at the moment volume create let's look at the help options for the create option okay so hecate cli volume create and the size of the volume that you want to create it's always specified in gigabytes so you can also specify the number of replica that you want because i've got two machines i've got two cluster nodes i'm going to specify replica as two which means it's going to be a replicated volume so the the brick that it's going to create the volume it's going to create is going to have two bricks one on each of my cluster nodes and all the data that i'm going to write is going to be replicated on those two nodes okay all we need is hecate cli volume create and the size and the replica hecate cli volume create minus minus size let's say one gigabyte 
and replica is two. Okay, cool. So you can see here our volume has been created. I, I can do Hecate CLI volume list. Okay, so that's our volume, and I can do Hecate CLI cluster info and the cluster ID, which is here. And now you can see that's our cluster and we've got two nodes and we've got one volume and if you look in the volume maybe I can do it again Hecate CLI volume list and Hecate CLI volume info that's the volume ID and if you do that it will give you the mount option so mount point so we are going to use this server Gluster 2 and that's the volume name that we are going to mount mount options and we're going to specify backup volume file servers is Gluster 1 so even you are mounting it uh, via Gluster 2 and if you take Gluster 2 down you would still be able to access this volume through Gluster 1 okay so that option is very important if you don't specify that option and if Gluster 2 goes down that's it you won't be able to access the mounted partition okay so we've got our volume let's try and let me open up another pane here we need to mount this glustrefs volume for that we need glustrefs client at install i'm still on my hecate node basically you will be installing hecate cli and the glustrefs client on some client machines and leave this hecate server just for the api component but i'm just going to use the same virtual machine app install glustrefs client okay so we've installed glustrefs client so only if you install the glustrefs client package you would be able to mount a glustrefs volume okay so let's mount it but for that i need information about the volume hecate volume info okay so now let's do a mount mount minus t and the mount pipe is glustrefs and we are passing this option which is this one here and the mount the remote server is cluster 2 and that's the volume and I'm mounting it under slash mnt okay so that's mounted and I can do mount grep for mnt and we've got our mount is there okay so I can do let's write a file to that mounted partition mounted volume echo hello to slash mnt test slash mnt test okay so that's the data that we've written and here let me log into one of the node one of the cluster node ssh root at 16.16.202 which is cluster 2 okay so let me log in password is admin and i can do cluster volume list so you can see that's the the volume that hecate has created for us on the cluster cluster we didn't create it manually and I can do volume info and if you look here that the volume is started it has two bricks one brick on each of the cluster node brick one is on cluster two and brick two is on cluster one okay so we are in cluster two and back in the Hecate machine if I do mount grep for MNT and we're using cluster 2 to create that mount point and let me take this machine down so in cluster cluster we have two cluster nodes cluster 1 and cluster 2 with a volume that's replicated between these two nodes and in the Hecate client machine we are connected through cluster 2 and we mounted a volume so if I take this machine down let's power off this cluster 2 machine okay that's clearly gone and back in this machine I can still do MNT and I can see that cat mnt test and I can still see that let's do echo hello again to mnt test and if I do cat we've got hello hello again okay let's bring this machine up vagrant up cluster 2 no provision now we will take the other machine down okay so Let's wait for this cluster 2 to come up and then once it's up let's take the cluster 1 machine down and see whether whether we can still access the uh, the cluster volume that we mounted all right so cluster 2 is up and running let's log into cluster 1 password is admin okay so that's the cluster 1 machine remember we wrote this text hello again to the same file mnt test the file called the test while cluster 2 was down okay so now i'm taking cluster 1 down 
So if everything was successful, if the replication was happening, the data from Gluster 1 should have been replicated to Gluster 2. So Gluster 1 is down, Gluster 2 is up. And now let's do ls mnt and we are still able to access the mounted volume. And if I do cat mnt test, there we go. So that confirms that the replication is working and the um, failover is also working. Cool. I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully um, this gives you a, some fundamental idea about ClusterFS, volumes, breaks, Hecate and how to interact with the Hecate layer to manage your entire ClusterFS. And the next thing I wanted to do is to introduce Hecate in Kubernetes so that you can use ClusterFS as your underlying storage and you can create dynamic volumes. You enable dynamic volume provisioning using Hecate and you basically use ClusterFS as your underlying storage system okay so give this a try let me know if you've got any questions i'll be happy to help and i'll see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye